Welcome to Linux Desktop December. So in this video, I'll be taking a look at Zorin Desktop. Now to my knowledge, this only appears in Zorin OS, which is based on Ubuntu. So it's a modified GNOME desktop, which has the Avant Window Navigator. So it comes with various theming options all built in, so you can switch between different desktop styles. Quite a unique feature, that one. There's not many Linux desktops with that option. The default styling option with Zorin is a Windows style, but I've gone for the Unity style here because that's a style I quite like. Just start with Terminal, I want to see what the memory usage is before we get too far into the system. So, 3-M, <laughs> we're using a whopping 900 meg of RAM already! Well, it's not exactly a lightweight distro, but I'm not, I'm not reviewing the distro itself, but it is Zorin OS Ultimate and it is the best part of 4 gig in size. Let's focus on this theme switcher because that's a party piece of this distro. We will notice here on the Unity view I have the option of searching by typing for the application. It's reasonably responsive. So this is the default styling, this is a Windows 7 styled look. Again on the application launch you have the find by typing. Then we've got this style which is kind of like Windows XP. The currently open applications are more of a full size view here, you've got the text and the icon. This is more of a GNOME layout of the activities and then you've got different virtual desktops. What do we call this style then? Well, I think this is more the GNOME Classic. That's the Unity layout. And finally we have the Mac layout. So you've got quite a few different options to choose from here. By the way, you only get six different desktop types with the Zorin OS Ultimate. The basic one only has three desktop types. We've got the option of choosing between quite a few different themes here. We've got light and dark themes. I quite like this colouring, but uh, I think for being kinder on everyone's eyes, I'll take the lighter colour. <laughs> Probably be a bit easier to see on this YouTube video. If it was my choice for the permanent operating system, I might have taken the darker background. There's different options there on the panel styling, so it's quite a different selection here. So we've got a time, date and calendar there. We've got a combined menu for volume control, network, control panel and shutdown. I keep calling it a control panel, it's settings manager, isn't it? And, then, and you can search this control panel, can't you? So what can we do? Click. Ah yes, mouse and touchpad. Yeah, take me to the correct area. One thing that bugs me on these GNOME desktops is there's no option to increase the number of lines you scroll by on the mouse wheel. Guess which desktop does have that feature? I'm not going to name it this time. <laughs> the default file manager is Nautilus, and I've expressed my displeasure about Nautilus many times in the past. Let's go across to open the video. Again, I can't really play much of it. Whoa, that looks a terrible place, doesn't it? There we go. It's a little bit better. It's just because I'm running in a virtual machine and it's not really keeping up very well. Though the interface doesn't look too bad of Totem Music Player in this case. But what I was really interested in was, does it have the multimedia integration? And, and yes, it does. You can play, pause, next and previous from here. Now right-clicking on the browser application, you've got the option of opening to new window or new incognito. Perfect. Let's do some private browsing. Dragging the application to the edge of the screen, we can resize to halves and only halves by default. Zorin comes with its own startup screen on the browser. Save image as. That's more of a sensible layout than budgie desktop. You've got the name slightly lower down into the save as. Into the downloads, open it up. So the default picture editor, that's going to be I have GNOME, isn't it? Just calls it image viewer though. But there's nothing much you can do with this, it's just you can view the image only. Viewing text files, well, by default it's opening up in Bluefish. Actually that might just be because it's a PHP file, let's try a bash script. Right, open it up in the default GNOME text editor, which is gedit. Quite a lot of code colouring here, so that makes it a bit easier if you're a programmer. So where has the memory usage got to after all that? So let's have a look at the system monitor. 1.4 gig. 
God dear. And that's out of 4 gig of RAM I've allocated it. The memory usage of Zorin is atrocious, I think is one word for it. But then again, that could be because it's quite a heavily loaded distro. That was a look at the Zorin desktop. Thanks for watching. See you all later.